Okay, so we're gonna take a gamble. I never know if the audio is good on the GoPro. One of them does good and the other doesn't. So hopefully you get it, because I'm only gonna do it once. I love you guys, but I got work to do. So uh, today we're gonna be painting a house. And uh, a lot of you guys have asked, uh, do I still have my painting business going? The truth is, it's kind of dead in the water. I plan on kicking it off in the future and uh, you know, really getting some jobs lined up. But right now, this year, our focus has been on the lawn business. But we take on, the, the main point is that we take on extra projects on weekends or whenever the mowing route is done, I line up big cleanups. I line up stuff that makes for good videos for you guys. I line up stuff that makes good money for our company and brings in extra revenue. So we're gonna be painting this house. This is overtime. And it's gonna drag in extra revenue for the business. So it's an easy one to paint. There's not a whole lot of issues. There is some little chipping and peeling, but mostly we just gotta caulk it up and then paint it. This job can be done. It can be done in one day. We are in the mowing rig today. I actually have a box truck for this. And I don't know why, but I put a new water pump in and it went out. And then I put a new water pump in and it went out too. And I mean, it's like back to back and almost immediate. So I put two, I put two new water pumps in because it needed a water pump put one in that water pump went out put a new one in and that one went out so two new water pumps and they both went out within about 100 to 200 miles I don't know what's going on there anyways so right now we're driving that the OG paint rig well the OG would have been the uh, 85 Chevy but that's all right you can do you can do it with whatever you have a lot of people get stuck on um, get stuck on starting their business because they're worried about equipment just just use what you have and get out there and make money check this out Ooh -wee. I don't know if you guys can see that there's some wasps there we're gonna get them out of there but I mean it's all in pretty good shape we're just gonna do a color change so I'm gonna caulk everything up so anywhere there's uh, wood to wood contact in this case. This is like a, the particle board type siding. It's Compressed composite board whatever we're gonna caulk all of that underneath the edge and that's gonna seal everything up and uh, If you can see I doubt you can right up here. There's it's starting to spread up there We want to seal it all up. We don't want any moisture getting in it behind it um, under it any of that and that's pretty much the uh, purpose of a paint job. It's not only to make your home look pretty, but it's to seal it up and protect it from moisture. Because what happens to wood when it gets wet? It warps and it rots. And what happens to wood when it's uh, exposed to excessive UV light? It warps and it rots and it degrades. Oh my goodness, he's doing something different. Smokey, I don't know if I can handle this. It's giving me anxiety. I'm having issues with my OCD right now, but oh my goodness, he's gonna do a transformational video. Get the popcorn, Smokey, let's do this. What's up, Juggernauts? In this video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna go ahead and paint a house. I figured it has that oddly satisfying uh, transformation where we're gonna take this from an ugly, dingy, sun-faded color, and we're gonna give it something a little more bold, something that pops, and uh, better for the market. Now, it's a little bit more of a bold color than I would suggest or choose, uh, but this was chosen by, actually, my mother-in-law, who stages and renovates homes to put on the market and uh, help them sell. So uh, she's amazing at what she does, by the way. Uh, excellent contractor for doing that kind of thing. And, you know, she picks colors that when I see the color chips, because this has happened a few times before, I'll see the color chips. I'm like, I don't see this working. But when it actually goes on the house or onto whatever piece of furniture we're painting, every time, man, I'm like, eh, she's right. So, you know, sometimes you have to... Um, well, for me, I have to trust somebody that's got more experience with it. You know, I can apply paint. 
I'm pretty decent with that. As far as picking out colors, I'm a pretty basic dude. You ask me what color to put on your house, I'm like, you know, grays are popular right now. <laughs> so that's that's kind of where I'm at. You know, um, whites, grays. Uh, if you want to ask me if you want one color or two color, I'm going to suggest one, hopefully. Uh, unless it's a Tudor house. A Tudor house means, you know, um, it's got a lot of trim. So, you know, those, those look cool with multiple colors. We've done a few of those in the past. So uh, as far as what we're doing here, I'm going to come in. I'm using a uh, Titan 440 spray pump machine. It's an airless machine. And uh, I'm using cardboard shields. You can buy a standard shield that you can, uh, you know, it's, you can reuse them over and over. But the problem is you basically have to have somebody standing beside you to clean it off nonstop so you can continue spraying. Uh, I like the cardboard shields. You just, you know, shield off what you don't want sprayed. Like in this case, I'm putting them between the shingles and the actual surface on the fascia. And that way I have a nice uh, clean edge between um, the painting surface on the fascia and the shingles. You know, the bottom edge of the shingle is black. So you could paint that. Some people don't care. The other benefit to putting um, shields in there is I'm not getting any overspray onto the shingles you know this is a really bright color if you were to spray and get a bright color onto say a brown or a black shingle you're gonna see it from the street and it's gonna look ugly so that's something to keep in mind and consider uh, but you know this is kind of a copper color when I first sprayed it on and it's wet it looked real orange but it did uh, dry and it deepened in tone a little bit and overall just left it looking pretty good now James it looks like he's standing around a lot here, right? But the thing is, he's actually got a very, very important job during the painting process. So while I'm spraying and I get all the glory because I'm the one that's spraying it out, James is running around. He's making sure everything is set up ahead of me so that I can spray and continue to spray real quick. And then the other thing is, you know, he's there if I need something. Hey, James, can you grab this for me? Because once you start spraying and you're in the heat of the day, you kind of got to roll through it and keep going. Uh, it's, you know, a speed process. Uh, you don't really want to spray. And, you know, when you have a wet edge, you don't want it to dry and then respray. And you end up with lap marks, which is um, you'll, you'll see basically where you sprayed and you'll you'll see a mark where it dried and then you had wet paint and then dried again so I don't really know the best way to explain that but if you're a painter you would understand what I'm saying basically you just you see lines in the paint when it's finished and it's ugly so we're pulling off the uh, the numbers for the address uh, I'm gonna shoot those with a black out on the lawn so we'll put them inside or we'll put them on a uh, cardboard shield and then we just spray paint them with a the black out there so here's where you can actually see um, how this color really pops and where it shows off. I've never liked this stone on the house. It's a unique stone. I've never really seen any other houses in the Tulsa area that have it. Um, I'm assuming it's uh, somewhere from New Mexico or Arizona. When I think of those kind of reddish tones, that's what I think of. But we don't ever see it around here. So it is, it's a very unique stone, but against this brown color that was on the house before, that kind of beige color, it, uh, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like it, the stone always just stuck out a little too much, it almost looked a little too pinkish, and um, I, I just never really liked it. I thought it was a dated look, but with this newer color and, um, you know, up against that, the color itself looks very modern, so it pops, and I think it works really well. It kind of gives it more of a what that adobe desert home type look when it's completed so as i'm coming through here uh, i am using the two foot extension on my sprayer and that allows me to not be on the ladder as much i can reach up and uh, be able to spray if you don't have the extension you have to basically be right on something so this gives me um, a wider spray path because i can reach further and uh, you know it keeps me off the ladder as much so if I didn't have that I would have to move the ladder every couple feet and it just really makes it kind of a, uh, a daunting process it's, it gets old pretty quick but um, so right here as I'm spraying I'm not pulling off the trigger as I'm going back and forth I don't know why I did that right here but this is like the one spot on the house I did that you generally wouldn't do that uh, want to do that because you'll lay paint on thicker as you're turning around 
So you would want to spray, let go, spray, let go, spray, let go, if that makes sense. So you, you don't want to lay on too thick of paint. Now uh, this here, we're going to come in right over that brick just like that, and then I'm going to fill in that gap I did. Whenever I spray, I try to do a um, you know 50% overlap from what I just sprayed, and that way we have two layers. That gives you good coverage, and normally you don't have to come back and fix anything. Now, if there was a, a coarse material, so if it was a plywood, and uh, you know, which this is plywood, but if it was a plywood and there were a lot of uh, little cracks, uh, you would want to do what is called back rolling, where you take a roller after I spray. James would come in behind me, and he would have that roller, and he would back roll so that it fills in all those little. I like to call them micro cracks in the surface. And then with these uh, downspouts, we always paint the downspouts in the gutter on the houses when we do those. That way everything's got a consistent uniform look. But we uh, shove the cardboard shingles behind the downspout and underneath it. And that keeps us from having to worry about um, taping off or anything like that. To me, it's the easiest way to, to spray out the downspouts. Uh, some people take them off the house when they spray and will actually take the gutters off as well. Uh, we wouldn't do that unless there was any wood rot or something like that behind the gutters that we had noticed, in which case then they need to come down so that we can repair the wood as well. But uh, this this house didn't have an issue. It was actually freshly painted about uh, four or five years ago, and it, other than being sun faded, it didn't really have an issue. It's time to paint it again, but everything's in pretty good shape. So if you're wondering as a homeowner, how often should you paint your your house? Really, you should go through and touch it up about every five years or so. Uh, proper maintenance on the paint, not only is it going to make your house look fresher and clean, but it's also going to protect you and save you from having to replace or repair wood rot, which can get really expensive really, really fast. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is it's going to be cheaper for you to have your house painted versus having your house have new siding put on and then painting it afterwards. Obviously, you'd have to pay for painting, but then you're also gonna have to pay for new siding. So, you know, just tossing it out is something to think about and uh, keep in mind and keep aware of. So this is actually my favorite part in spraying out a house. I love painting the front side of a house and the, uh, the side with the garage. The garage is kind of the funnest. Once you get everything knocked out trim-wise and stuff, um, you know, you know, because like here I'm coming through with the cardboard shield and I'm going to get the edge of it. And that after, after that, it's like just wide open painting and it, it goes so fast, but it's uh, the biggest transformation. You know, it's got this really, um, just really good feel on doing it. So we, we walk all the way across. We're not going to spray like a three or four foot section and then move over like three or four feet. We want to go all the way from side to side with the garage door. That way we don't have any spray marks in the center of the garage. Um, again, this is like what I was talking about, spraying the downspouts. I'm going to try doing this one-handed, but I got to admit, it's kind of hard holding the camera and guaranteeing that it had a good position on making sure everything's clear and visible, as well as painting, because I have to pay attention more towards painting. That's the most important thing with this. So I will try doing, um, you know, try it with a, a head mount down the road, but I'm not sure, you know, when you're painting you have some fallout, because when you spray, there's particles that get in the air, and then they just kind of slowly settle, and then they'll fall on everything, so they call it fallout. And you do have to be careful of that, because if it, you know, say it were to fall on a car, because you're painting your car, that would be an issue. And it used to be um, more dramatic than it is now, like it would be more of a concern. Now with modern um, latex paints and stuff, they're a little, a little heavier, right? And uh, you know, if it's like a clay-based paint or something like that, it's got more clays in it. Then you know, you've got different properties that are in the paint, and it's gonna cause them to act differently with fallout. But this paint, uh, it falls pretty quick, so you know, it's not one of those things with oil-based. You can actually have uh, the oil-based paint will fly in the air for quite a while. So when you used to hear about um, people getting overspray on the cars and stuff, generally it was with oil-based paint. If the wind picks it up a little bit, it'll drift two or three houses or even more down the road, 
and then you have an issue. So for us, if we, we can paint with what we have uh, with a car in the driveway, and we wouldn't have to worry about overspray, but generally I always go ahead and take plastic and just cover up the car just in case if we have a, a car in the driveway. But it, it's always better to take a little bit of added protection for yourself. And, uh, you know, it only takes a few minutes compared to if you were to uh, have an accident, then you're going to have a lot of stress and you're going to have to have that car washed and you're going to have to have some, some detailing work done insurance company might have to get involved you know that's all none of that stuff's anything you want to mess with right or at least it's not something i want to mess with so we always go above and beyond on prep and um, making sure that everything is we're gonna we're gonna have the lowest amount of liability as possible i think that's just good standard business practice you know in my opinion uh, this is this orange ladder is a 10 foot ladder if you're curious and you're wondering uh, It's a perfect size ladder for a lot of these houses. We could we have a um, I think it's a 21 foot extension ladder that we use quite a bit uh, Some houses you need a 32 foot, but it's it's just not really needed on a lot of houses uh, So we normally roll around on a house like this with a 10 foot and a 6 foot and we have the extension ladder in case we need it most of the time when we're using that, it's more on the prep side and not the paint side. I don't want to put an extension ladder on the house anywhere while I'm painting unless I have to. So if it had a really steep peak, you know, if the ridge on the, the house was a little more steep, then I might have to get that extension ladder up in there to get that taken care of. But most of the time I can get it with an extension and that 10 foot ladder. Now on the back side here, we actually ran out of paint, so it was getting a little thin. And I watered it down so I could stretch it out, but it was just a little too thin. So you'll see how it's kind of splotchy. So we ended up taking a lunch break and going and getting another gallon of paint. So we used six gallons total on painting this. And this was the uh, one section we had to touch up and repaint here. So all in all, not too bad. I think it went pretty smooth. I love to paint these little single story houses that have almost no prep and they're in and out, low stress. Um, and you know you can just get it done and be out the same day if you want to we took two days on this but you know we only worked a few hours on it at a time all right here's our finished product it's looking good we went ahead and painted the numbers on the house for her. painted this pole so that's a few of the uh, upsells we're gonna be doing the front door as well it's gonna be about the same color but a little bit deeper red. It's going to a Cajun red. We're gonna paint this as well. And then the front door, like I said, it's gonna go a little bit deeper. So kind of a cool color contrast. And uh, we'll be doing the door next weekend as well as uh, she asked us to do one of the rooms inside and um, a little bit of touch up on some trim. So not too bad. Overall, it came out good. It looks good. I'm happy with that. I am. I'm happy with that. So not too bad. We got all the gutters and downspouts sprayed out as well because that always adds a finishing touch. I want everything to match. This looks sharp. That looks sharp. The house looks sharp. What do you guys think? Ah. Oh, yeah. God, I love that. All right. That's this side. It's a, it's a pretty cool color. It's a, a light copper. A light copper color. I like it not too bad we just got a little bit of cleanup and we're out for today so quick little project um, it's a family member so I said we'd do it for 1100 and we did it for 1100 and it looks good and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do uh, the bedroom is gonna be 400 the door will be 100 
uh, and I'll throw in the light and the letters or the numbers. Nothing wrong with that. Check this out. look I think that looks really sharp came out looking good James you happy oh yeah looks good I'm happy he's happy customers happy uh, my mother-in-law picked the colors she's happy everybody's happy so it's all good we are gonna go ahead and get home and go unload and uh tomorrow is let's see it's 2020 and i got married in 2012 tomorrow is my eighth anniversary I've been married to my crazy lady for eight years uh i'm working that's horrible but that's the way it goes man uh so sometime this week among all the crazy jobs we got I gotta find some time to spend with my wife maybe I can take her to dinner tomorrow after work or go do something that's yeah I mean I can't forget why we're doing it all so good thing is she's a team player she understands she totally gets it she uh, she misses me all the time I know that and I'm working hard and I miss her all the time that's Man, that's life. You're gonna have to work. Sometimes you work on days you don't want to. Because when you're in a seasonal business, you gotta make hay when the sun shines. I'll take her out. I'll do something. <laughs> 